Mamba out. Bitch, I do this often. My bitch is bad, she always in the office. So I got a tags, I'm running my body. Can't see the pads, I'm living new fast. With 20, my dash, I'm up, but I lost him. He wanna brag, I don't need his bag. And took what he had, don't care what it cost him. Then he broke, he turned to a hoe. As soon as before, this shit is exhausting. Ran out of hope, I wanna be known. I'm snatching my soul, you're Randy Marshall. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Sports Sunders. And that's it, and thank you for just here on the brand new episode on the brand new week of Sports Sunday is 80. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video, and make sure to subscribe to the channel, make, make sure to comment down below, and also make sure to hit that bell for post notifications for every video and update from my channel. And today, we are talking the top 15 2021 high school football recruits in the nation. Of course, this is our first episode discussing high school football. And we hope this episode could be very successful. So, without further ado, uh, we will see you uh, and react to it, the top 15. All right, I'm going to start you off with our number 15 overall recruit, Nolan Rucci. He's a five star. He will be going to the University of Wisconsin. And his comparison is Mike McGlinchey, San Francisco 49ers. Ideal frame, like to be a cornerstone left tackle early in his career. Elite athleticism for his frame, strong genes with NFL father and brother at Wisconsin. What's your reaction? He's got a first round projection in the future. Well, with his family and his origin, he's definitely going to be an NFL player without a doubt. Going to Wisconsin, one of the top D1 college football teams. Uh, in the nation, of course, Wisconsin has not been very successful a little lately, but I do like that dude, John, until he came out of there. You look at Nolan you know, Rucci, look at his frame, 6'8", 295, right? Uh, Five-star crew, family ties. I think he could be very successful at Wisconsin. I could definitely see him being a top 15 pick in the upcoming NFL draft in the in the coming years, you know, you look at some of the, uh, the top of in this year, you look at guys like Sean Slater, you look at guys like uh, Panay Sewell, uh, knowing Richie could definitely be one of those guys come, uh, the, the next, come the next couple of years. All right, next up, James Williams, 6'5", 218 pounds, safety out of Opaloka, Florida. Mm, kind of hard to say it. He and he will be going to the U, baby, University of Miami. All right. His NFL comparison is Jeremy Chen of the Carolina Panthers. A unicorn of a prospect has been mistaken in the past for a defensive end instead of a defensive back, given lengthy frame that pushes six foot five to fifteen. Isn't bulky, however, could add mass and transition more to an in-the-box defender once in college or try to remain on the leaner side and has a first round projection. What is your reaction? Now, and you know, I always have a good safety and a person who uh, came out of the University of uh, Miami, right, is Hall of Famer Ed Reem, I'm afraid for his all time. Elliot James Williams, right, uh, safety 6'5'2'18. Uh, you'll get Miami. I think he can be a great fit. You have a lot of solid prospects going to uh, Miami, but with James Williams going there, definitely being a top 14 player in the nation. Look at his frame, look at his size. Honestly, one that we really haven't seen in a come to safety position with him being a 6'5", 218. You look at some of the safeties in the league, we see him being a little shorter and a little smaller frame. So this is definitely a big body safety who I believe could definitely dominate in the backfield and help any defense. Uh, again, uh, my, uh, Miami guy, great guy. All right, out of Fairfax, Virginia, we have the number 13, I believe, 13. Yes, number 13 guy, Tristan Lay, going to the University of Clemson, plays offensive tackle. And his player comparison is Ty Zambrolo. Sorry if I butchered that name. Has less tackle length and high level athleticism to be a elite guard. Wide shoulders will allow him to add up body mass and muscle development. Can bend at knees and win leverage battles in run game. Fires off well and is strong with initial punch. First round projection. 
Well, you look at Clemson, of course, the price of Trevor Lawrence. Of course, there's going to be a lot of questions around that Clemson team in the upcoming years. But adding this big body old lineman, right, uh, he's definitely going to be successful, especially at a top D1 college like Clemson, where you have one of the greatest coaches in college football history in Dabo Sweeney. We mentioned guys in this year's draft that happen to be old linemen. So I see uh, Panay Sewell and Rashawn Slater, and we mentioned uh, the number 15 player in the nation. With him being an old lineman going to Wisconsin, these two right here could possibly be compared to Panay, compared to Panay and Rashawn because based on their size and based on their height, their size and their frame, and plus the colleges they're attending, I think they could have a lot of success, and with all of them being five-star recruits, they're definitely going to have a lot of media coverage, and especially come the draft in the coming years. All right, next up, the number 12 player in our backyard, Darius, out of Denton, Texas, Jatavion Sanders, who is a wide defensive end. Six three and a half, two thirty five. Signs the Texas Longhorns. His player comparison is John New Smith of the Tennessee Titans. Now, well, you might be asking me why is this comparison to tight end if he's projected to be a wide defensive end? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this guy played both sides of the ball his entire high school career. Both offense and defense was an outstanding tight end, but is expected to be a defender in the future. Legitimate higher major recruit on both sides of the ball. Owns requ- owns <laughs> requisite size slash frame of a high major as defender of flex tight end. Ample snaps with both ways in production to match. Impressive functional athleticism in place speed relative to size. All right. Now I'm looking at uh, Tavian Sanders, right? Looking at uh, some of his high school film. Um, I believe he was a defensive end and a wide receiver. So you can get probably two and one, two, two for one special here. You look, he's very, very special. Because national reign, I believe, for like 94. Right. So he has a lot of media coverage. He's going to a top school, even though they have not had a lot of success recently. UT, you'll get his size, you'll get his frame. Probably one we really haven't seen out of wide receiver, of course. Uh, Six three two thirty five. I mean, look, you're going to UT. Are they going to have a lot of success in the upcoming years, especially with all these T1 colleges coming up? No, I don't really think so. But with him, you get the size, look at his frame. Uh, you look at his recruiting. Uh, definitely picking Texas UT. I think he could definitely be a top wide receiver prospect. Uh, in the coming years. All right, give me a minute. All right, at number 11, we have our first quarterback, Sam Hewitt, pro-style quarterback, 6'2", 190, out of Bellevue, Washington, going to the Washington Huskies. He is a five-star, and you might be wondering why this five-star player will be going to Washington, and we'll be getting that in a minute. First round, project, first round projection with a comparison of the former Los Angeles Rams quarterback, Jared Goff, quick effortless release no wasted motion can make all the throws equally adept at deep ball while also delivering the short intermediate throws with ease can run if needed but prefers to stay in the pocket and throws open receivers high football IQ can read defense gets through progressions and delivers the ball excellent bloodlines father is former NFL starter while two uncles also played quarterback at the FBS level one of them as well played in the NFL. Two NFL players within close range of his bloodline. It does not get better than that. What is your expectation of Sam Hewitt? No, look at Sam Hewitt from what from what I've heard. I think he committed to Washington back a couple years ago, back in 2018. I think that was the only school he was really focused on. I think with him being a five star. Uh, he'll be being compared to a former number one overall pick in Jared Goff. I think he may have a little chip on his shoulder, especially going to Washington, where we don't expect him to have a lot of success in the coming years. But the question for him, individually as a quarterback, is uh, how, I mean, he if he can throw the deep ball, it's, the question is, how accurate can you throw the football? 
how accurate downfield can you throw the football? Can can you throw those shots? Can you get those completions every which you wear? So you look at Sam here, right? What do we classify him as? Do we classify him as a deep threat? Do we classify him as a just calm? He group? is a. He doesn't have the from what I've watched of him. He doesn't have the best deep ball in the world. He's got a quick, effortless release. It's as they as they explained. It's kind of like Joe Burrow esque, where he doesn't really throw the deep ball super often, but he can throw it. Doesn't really need to, or doesn't really do it a lot, but he can throw it. Uh, like it depends because you look at a quarterback. Uh, you know the be- the best ability is availability. Like, is he durable when healthy? I think, even though I really have not watched, I'm watching them all. But look at him. His hometown is in Washington, so of course uh, there wouldn't be no surprise where he's going for college. But, his dad uh, and both of his uncles also went to Washington, and two of them played, and two of them played in the NFL. His dad was an NFL starter, so yeah, we can understand that. Right, family ties, but uh, if you can throw, if you say that, if he, if you say he can throw the deep ball. The really the question remains is how well, how accurate he can throw the football downfield. Especially going to Washington, how with the media coverage and all, how how high is he really thought of from NFL scouts and others? So we'll see. Uh, nothing but the best here. All right, that was just our number eleven player. Now we are in the top ten. We have our second player going to the U. D tackle, 6'4, 265 pounds out of Miami, Florida. The five star first round projection comparison is Sheldon Rankin's athletic, well built frame with room to add 20 pounds or more in college. Adequate length in the arms, highly distributed player with good traits to play multiple positions and alignments. Use explosive first step to shoot through gaps and wreck havoc in the backfield. What is your reaction? Wow. Uh, number one, congrats to the Miami Hurricanes getting two top 15 players so far in the nation. Uh, look at Leonard Taylor. Oh, my goodness. Look at his size. Look at his size. Look at his frame. He's definitely going to be one of the top picks in the draft in the coming years, right? Look at his frame. 265, 6'4". I really, uh, if I had to compare him to someone that happens, that happens to be a defensive tackle, it has to be one guy in particular, Jerome McCoy. Now, look at his size, look at his frame, look at his class, look at the media coverage. He's definitely going to be a top draft pick because look at him, like 6'4", 265. I mean, he's already getting national media coverage from across all the major sports networks like ESPN, Fox Sports. He's, he's, he's everywhere. But going to the U, this could be an attraction to a lot of major prospects come 2022, 2023, all the way uh, down the line. So definitely congrats to Leonard Taylor. He's definitely one of the best defensive tackles we've seen in a long time. I think we should actually put him in the conversation like in the past couple years by like Dexter Lawrence and others as some of the top defensive linemen in college football over the past five years. All right, so I have to warn you, as we get into the higher top, it gets a little, it, it, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see where most of these recruits are thinking. All right. Our first out of a couple of top 10 guys going to Ohio State, possibly. Emeka Edbuka, definitely butchered that name. Wide receiver, 61190, hometown, Silicon, Washington. Washington is cleaning house this year. He has a 99 rating. 99. Runs a 44240 and has a 35 inch vertical. Has a is a first round projection and a full comparison. Juju Smith used to elite body control to go with the optional size and strength with good top end speed and separation, physical wide receiver to, to press, but also take advantage of any. Caution given. What is your reaction? Okay, look at Ohio State from uh individually. I mean, hey, uh, from my eye standpoint, a pretty average for a QB. Look at the way he's probably a little undersized, and look at one ninety. Of course, looks on the top wide receiver in draft uh 
in this year's draft, look at Devontae Smith, of course, he, he, you know, he, he's under 200, I know, getting that protein in. And I look at Ohio State Buckeyes QBs, right? I believe, excuse me for much of the same, Justin Sims, uh, Reed, Warstel, and you look at Luke Morgan, all right? We really don't have to worry about who's going to be the QB1 because you're on Ohio State. It's a top uh, prospect. Well, okay, Ohio State QB1, I have to make a quick, quick, quick um, comment about that. So the guys going in, it seems that they would like to put it was it seems it's either at this point Jack Miller or CJ Stroud and Kyle McCord who came in in this 2021 class who will be in the discussion. My personal guy is CJ Stroud. Love CJ Stroud. Not a, the hugest of Jack Miller fans. He's injury prone. I don't think he can last a full season. I'm a CJ Stroud guy. I think that's the way to go. All right. So. Um... Either way, you still have a solid number one option. You look at this for you look at this man's four time. You look at his vertical. You look at his barrage. I mean, the the attributes are all there. He's a five star recruit being compared to the likes of Juju Smith Schuster, a, a Pro Bowl, arguably a top fifteen wide receiver in the league. This man here, he 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 definitely has the ability to be a great phenomenal NFL player. But it depends on how he performs at uh, the Ohio State University. Of course, you look at the system. Uh, Ryan Dance provided, of course, it's not going to be any Justin Fields anymore. Chase Young is not there anymore. Nemo's not there anymore, right? Yeah, Fakuda's not there anymore. But the question remains: Is he going to be the? Is he going to be the main vocal point of the team? And if he is, he's definitely going to have a lot of success. All right, number eight player in the nation, coming out of. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, wide defensive at 6'4", 245, Mr. Dallas Turner going to the Alabama Crimson Tide. <sighs> first round comparison, first round projection, excuse me, comparison to Shaq Lawson, the Cleveland edge player that is in some way looks more like a linebacker than he does a defensive and carries mass throughout the torso and down and equipped with long arms for someone just a shade under six foot four, one of the most productive pastures to come out of South Florida in recent years. What is your reaction? All right, so the side. Uh, defensively, they finished 21st in the nation last year in total defense, 13th in scoring defense, and 15th in a lot of per play. A lot of programs that is exceptional at Alabama, uh, of course, to some, is pretty unacceptable and boarding. On a disaster, of course, how good this Alabama defense is. So I can understand why they brought Dallas Turner in. Now, we all know Nick Saban knows how he's one hell of a recruit, all right? He knows how to recruit the hell out of anybody. So bringing Dallas Turner in, that's definitely going to be the next guy uh, representing, the, uh, representing the Alabama Crimson Tide. Of course, he's not going to be alone because Alabama is one. Of course, they're coming up from national championship. Of course, we see guys like Mac Jones and Jalen Wall and Devontae Smith departing, and they're just trying to bring in more recruits so they can continue this run going. So, but defensively, right. they're trying to improve. Of course, even though Twenty First Nation is, is really, really good for Alabama to their fans and to some other standards, um, that's pretty unaccept that's pretty unacceptable. So they're they're just trying to skip the game up this upcoming year and, and repeat. I also have to add that Alabama finished this year with not only the one with not only the top recruiting class in the nation but the number one recruiting class all time in the history of the rankings so again congratulations to Alabama all right the number seven overall player Marius Mims six seven three hundred thirty pounds from Coke Ryan Florida I mean yeah Georgia sorry headed down to the Georgia Bulldogs projected first round comparison comparison is Cam Robinson, enormous offensive lineman who projects to tackle with elite height and length. Verified 6'7 with a 7 foot 1 wingspan. Massive hands were college ready mass, well, yet still own space for more if desired. First guy off the bus. What is your thought? Well, um, as far as I'm concerned, the Georgia Bulldogs got themselves 
a dog. And I mean, hey, six, seven, three, thirty. He 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 can he can carry the load entirely. I mean, he can definitely protect the hell out of a quarterback. So, I mean, hey, uh, Georgia Bulldogs got a dog. Uh, Marius Mims is going to be a top draft. I mean, if any NFL scout came on the show today, they could say Marius Mims is going to be a top draft pick, not just because of his height, but just because of size and frame in general. And plus, we all know Georgia has some top recruits. They're definitely going to be successful, uh, unlike last year. So, I mean, hey, uh, they got a dog in the Mary Smith. Congrats to him. All right. Of course, we go to our number six overall player and our next quarterback. In fact, the number one ranked quarterback in this class, dual threat quarterback Caleb Bloom, 6'1", 210 pounds out of Washington, D.C., going to OU, first rounder. And his NFL comparison is your guy, Dak Prescott. Good frame, body, th- upper body mass, maximum Mises his size by standing tall in the pocket and throwing with an ideal arm angle. True dual threat with a sub 4.6 in the 40 has one of the strongest arms in the 2021 class. So look at Caleb Williams. He definitely has some size. Look at 6 one, two, 10. And as far as I'm concerned, if you if you compare him to the one and only Dak Prescott in Dallas Cowboys, he can damn sure throw the football. So Look at Caleb Williams. He's going to OU. Are we expecting him to be the starter? I believe so because look, yeah, well, okay. I expect him to be the starter because look at his friend being a per- deck person. I want him no, to be the starter. There, there, there's, there's, there's. OU this year has a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback in Spencer Rattler coming back for his final year, believed to be. His junior year, so Caleb Williams will be riding the bench this year, but I know Spencer Rattler. I know the great quarterbacks who have come and gone through the OU system. You look at guys like Baker Mayfield. You look at guys like Colin Murray and, and the Jalen Hurts of the world. Now you bring in Spencer Rattler. Then, then I believe the succession plan for Spencer Rattler is definitely going to be Caleb Williams. You look at one of the top top ten recruit in the nation. Where Spencer Rattler is possibly going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate, but I don't believe that's going to happen. Uh, that's going to be false. Spencer Rattler is not going to be the Heisman Trophy winner, but that's another discussion for another time. Uh, but Caleb right, Williams is we'll be doing the Heisman be. video later in the year. But Caleb Williams is definitely the Caleb Williams is definitely the succession plan, and he's definitely going to be uh another great quarterback at OU. All right. With our next player, we have another one going to the Alabama Crimson Tide, Tommy Brockermeyer, offensive tackle, 6'5", 292 pounds out of our real backyard, Fort Worth, Texas, man. Whew. All right, he is a first-round projection. His comparison is Jake Matthews' great height and frame for the position where his mask well and still has space for major Growth in college, extremely high floor, offensive line prospect with requisite size, movement ability, and rare pedigree. All right. Obviously, this was a huge surprise in his recruiting class as Tommy and his twin brother both will be going to the Alabama Crimson Tide, as well as them, as well as the Alabama Crimson Tide stealing them from the Texas Longhorns as their brother, their elder brother, is on campus playing football for the Texas Longhorns. So this was a big recruiting upset. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a high recruiting subject. A 4 6 eight, and pretty much just finesse Texas Longhorns once again. Uh, they have, you look at him, you know, size ram 6'5", 292 out of Fort Worth, uh, off the tackle. He, he, Nick Saban definitely has a plan. Of course, to protect his quarterback no matter who it is. So, Alabama is definitely, in my mind, the favorite to repeat as national champions and with signing uh, to elite offensive linemen out of high school. I do believe uh, Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide are going to have a lot of success, and this just 
pretty much likes in my decision as far as, as far as I'm concerned. All right. That was our number five player. Now we're hitting the top four. The number four overall player going to, again, the Ohio State Buckeyes, Jack Sawyer, side defensive end. Excuse me, 6'5", 248 out of Puck, out of Pickerton, Ohio. Definitely messed that name up. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that this year. Um, first round projection. Comparison is Nick Bosa, man. Physical, but put together prospect has taken weight and speed training seriously and shows up likely will not add tons on, and tons of weight coming college, but still has a little bit of room. Great athlete who has is a multi-sport guy and a multi-positional guy on the football field, including even some stints at quarterback as an end that athleticism shows up as he gets off the ball well and can bend the corner and get up field, man. What is your reaction? Oh, man. Of course, being compared to Nick Bose, so you look at his uh, height. Size and frame six five two forty eight. Uh, the the highest seed by us definitely got a dog, and with this, I think Ohio State is definitely trying to compete again after falling short in the national championship last year on Ohio last year win. So adding Jack Sawyer, get another top prospect in the wide receiver position offensively. No matter who the quarterback position is, they have two top. 10 prospects and adding Jack Story, who's definitely uh, been big talk across the high school, across the high school sports, high school football sports world. This is definitely a huge, huge, huge signing by the high state backers. All right, the number three overall recruit, JT2 Molau out of Samaras, Washington. And ladies and gentlemen, is the only real uncommitted high school football player for this class obviously he wanted to play he is a football and believe it or not basketball player he wanted to play for his school in his senior year which many of the other top players get did not get a chance to do so he is delaying his commitment and recruitment to still be able to play that season out is projected to either be going to Alabama or Ohio State. Is a first round projection. This comparison is Cameron Hayward, powerful, athletic, and nimble with room to still add specific to specific hated weight at the next level. Has lined up on the edge, mixed with hands down while also standing up. Elite pass rushers who has, can mix a variety of moves with pure strength to shed his blockers. Now, now, Aiden, you look at, uh, of course, according to projections by 24-7 Sports, the top two uh, possible destinations for him are going to be either Alabama or Ohio State. Now, if he goes to Ohio State, that may shift the balance of power. It may shift the odds of the national champion this upcoming season because imagine pairing him up with Jack Sawyer at Ohio State. That will be a dynamic duo defensively. I believe they will be one of the top defensive teams in the nation. You, that defensive line is going to be dynamic. But again, if you have to the Alabama comes to time, that just gives me more assurance about how great Nick Saban is as a coach and how great this Alabama comes to time is. So this this player right here, he may he can possibly shift the balance of power when it comes to crowning a national champion this year. Look at his size, look at the frame being compared to Cameron Aver of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is a phenomenal player, top three player in the nation. Uh he's definitely a phenomenal football player. And I can't wait to see what the future holds for him. The number two player overall in the nation, Alabama gets another one. Offensive tackle, 6'6, 325 pounds out of bridge. Florida coming out of the IMG Academy. First round projection in full comparison is DJ Humphreys. Look at the pads with tall frame and long arms, large hands, body mature while lifting in a college style strength program over the past two years and a half. Room, however, to keep adding muscle, a defensive end with a basketball background that made the transition to offense and became a two-year starter at left tackle for IMG Academy. What is your reaction? Uh, my thoughts are 
man, J.C. Latham, uh, he's incredible. Of course, going to IMG, we, I, I, I've heard of him before. Uh, I've seen a couple of pilots, man. He, he's phenomenal. Offensively protecting the quarterback. Of course, going into the album comes to tie. Um, coming off of a national championship, J.C. Latham is definitely going to have a lot of media coverage going to Alabama. Uh, he's I believe Nick Saban has a lot of great words to say about him. He, Nick Saban, has put together, honestly, possibly one of the greatest offensive lines we have seen in college football history, recruiting wise. I mean, this just shows how much Nick Saban cares about protecting his quarterback, no matter who it is. And J.C. Latham is uh, one of the best players in the nation, believe it or not. All right, the number one player in the nation without further ado is USC's Corey Foreman, 6'4", 265-pound defensive end out of, can't say that on the internet, California, um, has a 100 overall rating on 24-7, but of course keeps that 99.94 on the regular composite. Runs a 48840, has a 30 inch vertical, and is first round projection with a comparison to Cameron Jordan. Has a prototype frame for a strong side rush end and has worked hard on his body over the last year. Has leaned out, losing about 20 pounds, and could end up at the outside backer in a 3 4 scheme. Has the kind of all around game that will allow him to play in any defense is naturally strong, quick off the ball, and has multiple ways to beat a tackle. What is your reaction to the number one player in the nation? No, Corey Foreman just wanted to stay uh, pretty much close to home. Uh, from what I've heard, I believe his hometown is about 49, 50 minutes away from USC, so he pretty much wanted to stay close to home. I understand that. You look at USC. We haven't heard that college mentioned in the top 15, but you're landing a – to the number one recruit in the nation, uh, a five star recruit being compared to Cameron Jordan, a multiple time Pro Bowl, he's definitely going to be a top draft pick in the upcoming years. So, this could be a this is a win win for both Corey Foreman and both a win win for USC recruiting wise. Of course, I believe, uh, he did want to stay close to home, but this is a great pickup by USC and a great decision by him. All right, that is the end of today's episode of Sports Now with Darius Naden. And if you like this, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment, make sure to blow up this video because I personally really enjoy educating Darius about the recruits of tomorrow and helping him learn about our next biggest stars. And if you want to support that man, definitely make sure to support this video. And if this gets enough likes, we will, of course, do basketball and baseball for you guys in the future all right so this has been sports now with darius nade and i'm aiden that is darius and we will see you guys later peace, peace.